We all know that nutritional deficiencies are detrimental to our health, but not all deficiencies affect us equally. And as regards vitamin deficiency, the most serious one is the vitamin D deficiency due to the enormous amount of functions it has and due to how often this is seen in the population in general. The difference between vitamin D and the rest of vitamins lies in the enormous number of functions it has and you can think of vitamin D more as a hormone than as a vitamin in itself. Vitamin D is a steroid hormone which affects the expression of more than a thousand genes. This role that vitamin D plays on the expression of those genes will obviously imply that vitamin D controls the physiological processes that those genes would normally carry out. Now, the great majority of us has learned that sun exposure, especially to UVB radiation, does help us in the production of vitamin D in our skin. And this is true, but up to a certain point, because we need both the raw material for our body to be able to synthesize it, as well as the later activation of this substance in our body so that it can fulfill all those functions that we all know about. Now, vitamins can be either hydrosoluble or liposoluble, that is to say, fat-soluble. Being liposoluble vitamin D is very well distributed in fat. So then, the more body fat you have, the less amount of vitamin D you will have circulating in blood. Thus, in order to know how much vitamin D I need we will see this in a minute you must take into account your body weight. Besides regulating many of your genes, vitamin D will help you keep and preserve your telomeres. Telomeres are sections that are repeated many times and that are at the end of your DNA to protect it. So, as you keep losing these telomeres while you start aging, the more your DNA will be damaged and the worse your cells will work. If you would like to know more about telomeres and about how to stay young, genetically speaking, I will leave you my video in the description. But if you belong to the 25% of the population with the least amount of vitamin D in telomeres, in genetic age, you will be 5 years older. What I mean is that you will be 5 years older genetically speaking only due to the fact that your vitamin D levels are kept low. So, people with optimal values of vitamin D will live longer and in better condition. Vitamin D has so many functions that it would be illogical to mention all of them due to the thousands of roles it plays genetically, but there are four or five which are important and which would be worth considering when you finally understand why some deficiencies are more serious than others. Vitamin D is particularly important for metabolism of calcium and bones, for hormonal synthesis, particularly in men, mainly as regards their levels of testosterone, for immunity, and, though there is still lack of evidence, there are already in enough studies relating vitamin D and the low levels of this vitamin with depression. As regards bone metabolism, there are very simple key factors about vitamin D that you need to know. Even though we know that low levels of vitamin D in blood do accelerate bone mass loss, mainly in women, taking vitamin D supplements only to increase your bone density is not enough. To improve your bone mass you need to take vitamin D and vitamin K together, if possible, since they work together in bone metabolism, and obviously you need to do exercises which stimulate the production of new bone tissue, generally strength exercises. If you are suffering from any kind of these pathologies, you can consult my video about bone metabolism. But the important thing to understand is that only taking supplements of vitamin D to increase bone density is generally not enough. Secondly, we must consider the hormonal synthesis and the vitamin D metabolism. As I was previously saying, vitamin D is very much related to all steroid hormones. In fact, it is also much related to male infertility where we can see that many cells called spermatic cells, which are closely related to the production of testosterone and also of spermatozoids, have vitamin D receptors, increasing notably the production of testosterone when having a good level of vitamin D. In fact, if you have low vitamin D levels, you will lower your production and I have very often seen people with vitamin D deficiency who by normalizing their vitamin D blood levels, soon improve their testosterone levels not doing anything specific for their testosterone. As I was telling you before, it is true that vitamin D can be produced when you expose your skin to the sun, mainly to UVB rays, but this is not an active form of vitamin D, it is simply a pre-vitamin D. On the other hand, as regards metabolism this substance must firstly be activated in your liver. Therefore, the better your liver works, the more conversion to this active substance there will be. In your liver, this pre-vitamin D is transformed into 25 hydroxyvitamin D to be later transformed in your kidneys into a substance called 1 to 25 hydroxyvitamin D or calcitriol that is the active form after having transformed D3 into this substance. What is the problem here? The worse your kidneys and your liver work, the less activation of this vitamin D you will have. Then, the
The worse the precursor's levels are, even if you have a lot of solar exposure, the lower the levels of vitamin D will be. Unfortunately, today it is quite frequent to find people with low levels of vitamin D everywhere, even in equatorial countries where there is a high level of solar exposure. So, as you can see, it is not as simple as being exposed to the sun for vitamin D to fulfill its function. In the third place, we can mention the immune system, which is more and more related to vitamin D levels since many studies have demonstrated that low levels of vitamin D worsen the functions of the immune system because today there is a closer relation between a vitamin D deficiency and the alteration of vitamin D receptors with autoimmune diseases. Even today, there is a lot of evidence as regards vitamin D and its good levels in our bodies reducing viral replication, that is to say that if we have a virus it will replicate much less and this includes COVID-19. There are lots of studies as regards COVID-19 which show that people taking vitamin D supplements have lower virus levels and less inflammation than people without good levels of vitamin D. How much vitamin D should I take? How much is really enough? What is the correct value of vitamin D? On the one hand, there are people who may tell us that taking vitamin D supplementation will lead us to high levels of toxicity and to the danger that vitamin D toxicity implies in itself with the nutritional recommendations for example of taking a maximum of 1,000 units per day. But on the other hand, studies from 2010 published in the American Journal of Nutrition show that the minimum dose with which we can start noticing symptoms of toxicity due to excess is that of 40,000 international units. We are talking about 40 more times than the nutritional recommendation of the most generous countries countries as regards recommendation, and that you are supposed to take this for 12 weeks to start finding toxicity. In fact, studies show that 10,000 daily units, that is the highest dose in a supplement that you will be able to get a supplement these 10,000 daily units, that is the same as 250 micrograms, have shown toxicity in only one person after seven running years of taking 10,000 daily units. What is the dose one should take then? The ideal answer is always going to be the dose which will allow you to reach the optimum values in your laboratory tests. The optimum value of vitamin D is around 60 nanograms per milliliter and this depends on your own body, but this usually means between 5 and 10,000 daily units to achieve these levels. If you cannot measure vitamin D level frequently enough so that it would help you determine which would be your ideal amount so as to keep the optimum values, Measure it once and if the values are bad or below the values you would like to have, then take 5,000 units every day, which will not guarantee that you will reach the optimum values, but it will guarantee that you will never exceed and that you will never have, as a result, any toxicity problem. When you come across information related to the benefits of any substance, as for example vitamin D, or related to the role any substance plays in your body, bear in mind that generally they will be mentioning benefits that you will only achieve if you can maintain the optimum values of that substance. All the benefits mentioned with respect to vitamin D and hair loss, depression, and many other problems related to immunity, etc., will be fully achieved only if you manage to maintain the optimum values of that substance, but not when you have normal values barely within the range, as it usually happens with the vast majority of the population, even if it is supplemented. Vitamin D deficiency is one of the most problematic issues as regards nutritional deficiencies but at the same time it is one of the easiest to solve because the only thing you must do is take a supplement if you are having any deficiency. You do not even need willpower to make a change as regards your habits. To optimize nutrients in your body is only a question of common sense, either for vitamin D or for any other nutrient. A good and healthy diet for you will be the diet that allows you to keep good levels of vitamins in blood. This should always be measured so as to be sure that you are within the ranges where you should be as regards these substances, and once there you will decide what you have to do. To keep optimum values of nutrients and not to have nutritional deficiencies is one of the key factors so as not to suffer from chronic diseases in future and to have a good quality of life. If you have liked this video, give it a like, share it, or subscribe to the channel because you are going to receive weekly videos on how to improve your quality of life in a non-orthodox way.